And what was your first day in the job like? Uh, I don't really... I can't explain. I can't... I can only talk about the clock, OK? It's, it's a very strict rule, OK? I mustn't talk really about myself or the building or, you know... As Keeper of the Great Clock, I'm responsible for the day-to-day -day maintenance of Big Ben, or the Great Westminster Clock, as it's formerly known, although the actual work is carried out by our clock engineers, Brian and John. We always try and maintain the dignity of the clock. We don't really believe in, in lasers or flags or that sort of thing. Do you feel that's right? Uh, the, the, the... That question. <laughs> <laughs> getting you're getting the... political. Well, we're currently in the basement of the House of Commons itself. Uh, we're about um, 500 feet from the base of the clock, and this is where the clock workshop is situated. It gets a lot of uh, loving care and attention, it does. It's quite a privilege to look after it, I must admit, and, and I think Brian feels that way. It's his baby, like, you know. <laughs> I mean, he's been doing it for 18 years or more. Brian Tipper and John Tricky work together on the maintenance and servicing of one of the largest clocks in the world. It's an enormous responsibility to care for a clock which is at the heart of Parliament and a revered national icon. I go up there when he's on holiday, stand in for him, or occasionally you might say, oh, I don't, don't fancy getting up those stairs, Garton. Would you mind going up? It's Brian, Tipper and John Tricky. They take it in turns to wind the clock. It's done on a Monday, a Wednesday and a Friday. It takes about 45 minutes. And in between actually winding the clock, they take the opportunity to walk around, carry out some general maintenance, such as oiling and greasing, carry out a visual inspection of the mechanism and make sure nothing's come loose, etc. Well, most major clocks are probably only looked at about once a week, if not once a month. But because this is a chiming clock, it actually has to be wound three times a week. So it does get a lot of loving care, far more than most clocks. One does listen. It's just habit. You can hear if the escapement's knocking or, or preparing to stop or seize up. You can hear that. And obviously the hammer work, the hammers and bells, you can hear a dud note or a, a note that doesn't strike. <laughs> well, you can't hear that, can you? So <laughs> It's uh, very much a visual, but it's also an audible thing. I mean, they get used to the noise the clock makes, the ticking, the noise of the actual mechanism going off, and they listen, obviously, to make sure that those noises are quite normal. Yes, the question we get asked most often is undoubtedly whether the clock is actually called Big Ben, and of course it isn't. Big Ben actually refers to the hour bell itself. The clock is called the Great Westminster Clock, although that's rather a formal title these days, and I think it's generally known as and loved as Big Ben. Well, it stopped on us twice in the last two years, and one was quite recently. The, chime, the chimes hung up. It gave two blows, and then it stopped. The clock stops, I suppose, on average about once every three to four years. A frequent cause of it is actually snow getting onto the hand and stopping the drive. Probably the most famous is in 1945 when a flock of starlings landed on one of the hands and actually stopped the clock, which is quite an amusing story. Back in 1776, the, the chime mechanism fell apart. Big Ben broke down on August the 5th, and inside the clock room, parts of the mechanism were still lying where they were flung when a bearing housing shattered. Metal fatigue has been diagnosed as the cause, and it will be several months... It was a terrific mess in the clock room, like a bomb had gone off, and that's what they thought it was, actually, originally. If anyone had been up there, it would have been highly dangerous, I think, if it had happened when someone was up there. Three weeks is the longest the great clock has been off duty in 117 years. 
So it was with great satisfaction that clockmaker John Vernon, having checked his own watch with Tim, swung the pendulum to set the clock going again. For the most part, Big Ben does keep good time. Accurate to within one and a half seconds, this extraordinary piece of engineering is helped along by some good old-fashioned pennies. Before you go away, remind me, if you add a penny, it speeds the clock up, is that right? If it's going slow, yeah, you add a penny. And it's two-fifths of a second, isn't it? But what you've got to do is remind, remember that it's usually, it's either going fast or slow. Yes. If it's already going fast, yeah. when you take the calculations, then you take one off. Yeah, to slow it down. Yeah. Yep. OK. Every New Year's Eve, we're obviously very concerned that the bell does actually ring properly because a lot of people now gather around the base of Big Ben rather than Trafalgar Square. It's become something of a tradition. And we therefore station one of our engineers, either Brian or John, up the clock every New Year's Eve to make sure it does actually chime. One New Year's Eve, one of the public noticed that the, the, the tone was wrong on one of the bells. I don't know how he, how he managed that, but he, anyway, Brian had to come up and he adjusted the, the, the hammer levers. What had happened, the, the, the rubbers, the buffers that the, the hammer falls down on had got too hard due to the weather. It was cold, very cold. That, it was very cold. He adjusted the hammer so that it came down a little bit further and, and gave a stronger blow on the bell. Otherwise, it would have been broadcast all over the world with the dud bell. <laughs> One of the most important moments in the life of Big Ben is certain to be the ringing in of the new millennium. A huge responsibility lies on Brian and John's shoulders. Well, when the millennium arrives, I expect we'll both be up there. Um, hopefully there'll be other people up there having a celebration as well. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I, I definitely, you can definitely expect us to be up there. I've thought about joining him, it really depends on what uh, I'm doing that evening, but uh, it'd be very nice to be there. Hopefully it will strike off on time, and uh, if it doesn't, I don't know what we do. <laughs> I think the funniest moment I've had is the, the newspaper phoning me up to ask me if the clock was millennium proof. They actually seemed to think there was some sort of computerisation of Big Ben. I can't imagine how they thought the Victorians would use a, a, a microchip, but there we go. I suppose they felt it might have the millennium bug. Our time season continues with a nasty glimpse of the future. The aliens are coming and Jeff Daniels is their host. The film Timescape at 11.25.